as models get better and more capable, one of the most exciting opportunities is making them available for people to engage with directly. That's the opportunity we have at BARD. We now live in a world where robots can talk to us like humans. OpenAI's ChatGPT changed the world forever and showed us the true capabilities of artificial intelligence. It uses something called generative AI to respond to human prompts in conversational ways and it's trained on massive amounts of data. Google saw all the attention that the new company on the block was getting and decided it was time to roll out its version of generative AI called BARD. And it absolutely sucked. Two months later and after going back to the drawing board, Google claims that BARD is much smarter at things like reasoning and math prompts. And this may be thanks to it running on Palm 2, Google's new and improved language model. From incorporating tools like Google Maps to new innovative ways, Google is attempting to keep AI responsible. On this episode of AI Focus, we'll discover what the new BARD has to offer and decide whether it will finally be a worthy competitor to ChatGPT. And we'll do it all without the forced awkward claps. Oh, and stay till the end to hear about the new things Google has come up with to battle misinformation and evil intentions. Sit back and enjoy this little breakdown because I want to hear your opinions on it in the comments. Google says they first launched BARD as a limited access experiment on a lightweight LLM to get feedback, which translates to we wanted attention to so we made something really quick. Nowadays, the company claims Palm 2 has caused BARD to take a huge leap forward and now can help coders with programming. But before we get into that, let's look at the new ways BARD will affect everyday life. First, BARD has two new export options that make it easy to move BARD's responses directly into Gmail and Docs. But the fun doesn't stop there. BARD is going to become more visual in its responses. When entering, what are some must-see sites in New Orleans? BARD uses Google search and the knowledge graph to find the most relevant images. These images provide the user with a better sense of what to expect in any situation. You can even prompt BARD with images, which opens up the possibilities even more. Also, Google has announced that BARD is getting tools that will allow users to tap into services from Google and extensions with partners in innovative ways. This includes Google Lens. In this hypothetical situation, a user uploads a picture of their dogs and then prompts BARD to write a funny caption. The lens detects what's going on in the photo and then BARD generates some funny captions based on the image. What well, funny is subjective. The second one almost initiated a smile. This next example shows BARD's true potential in affecting everyday life. Here, an 18-year-old needs to make up his mind on what he wants to study in college. So he enters a prompt that says, I'm thinking about colleges, but I'm not sure what I might want to focus on. I'm into video games. What kinds of programs might be interesting? So Bard lists a bunch of relevant suggestions and the user decides on animation. He types, help me find colleges with animation programs in Pennsylvania. Bard gives a list and then the user asks it to show these colleges in a map. Now Bard uses Google Maps to show where the schools are. Impressive. Next, the student says, show these options as a table. After the table is created, the very demanding user prompts Bard to add a column showing whether they're public or private schools. Then the user exports the data to Google Sheets so he can now demand his family to help him with his search. This example shows how info from Bard can quickly be moved over to any Google tool for maximum efficiency. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay up to date on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. But that's just Google's tools. Google claims BARD will be able to integrate with countless services out there, including Instacart, Indeed, OpenTable, and many others. Check out this example with Adobe Firefly. The company claims you'll be able to generate images with this partnership right inside of BARD. This prompt says, make an image of a unicorn and a cake at a kid's party. BARD and Firefly then generates these images. It's nothing we haven't seen with Midjourney, Dolly, and Bing Image Creator. Before we get into the new ways Google aims to make responsible and bold AI, let's talk about coding. Bard can now collaborate on tasks like code generation, code debugging, and explaining code. It's even learned more than 20 programming languages. Okay, Google, you've got my attention. 
Let's look at this example displayed at their keynote, where the presenter attempted to program a chess move in Python. She types, how would I use Python to generate the scholar's mate move in chess? And here you can see that Bard has created a script to generate a chess move in Python in a very easy to read manner. Bard even provides code citations for blocks of code. You can click the link and it goes right to the source. And it can also help you understand what's going on with the code. Now she types, can you tell me what chessboard does in this code? Next pops up a clear explanation of what's going on with the code. Then she asks how to improve the code and a bunch of suggestions are provided. She then prompts Bard to join them into one single Python block and then exports the code into Colab. And soon there will be the ability to export to Replit. I'm no developer, but I hear that this is a very nice thing. Also, they've implemented a dark theme, which is necessary for a good time. Okay, enough about code. There was a lot of advancement going on in AI, and Google was once really gung-ho about sitting on the technology until it was proven to be safe. Now that they've said screw that idea, what's Google's plan to keep us safe? This is James Benkia, and he leads a new division at Google called Technology and Society. He stands between a safe society and one dominated by misinformation and killer machines, leading the charge for bold and responsible AI. There are many scientific breakthroughs going on at Google, like Google DeepMind's AlphaFold, that can accurately predict the 3D shapes of 200 million proteins. According to James, that's 400 million years of progress in just weeks. And so far, 1 million researchers around the world have used these predictions, like Zheng Lab, that used AlphaFold to develop a new molecular syringe that could deliver drugs to help improve the effectiveness of treatments for diseases like cancer. But as great as that is, we still have to think about dangers like unfair biases and misinformation. To combat this, Google has seven principles that helps them assess every AI application. And they also have new tools that will help people evaluate new information. For example, look at this image going around about the moon landing which suggests the whole thing was fake. But is it real? Google is presenting two new ways for us to evaluate images. First is the About This Image tool in Google Search. With this tool, you can find out when and where an image first appeared and where it can be seen online. This provides any user with context on images to see if they're reliable. Google Lens will also be able to provide this context. In addition, every AI-generated image will have metadata just in case you come across it outside of a Google platform. Creators will be able to add metadata as well, as you can see here. This picture is marked as AI-generated. Watermarks will also be included into their latest generative models to address the problem of misinformation. Check out this example of a new tool that's amazing, but could be used for bad intentions. Universal Translator is an experimental AI video dubbing service that helps experts translate a speaker's voice while matching their lip movements. What many college students don't realize is that knowing when to ask for help and then following through on using helpful resources is actually a hallmark of becoming a productive adult. Muchos universitarios no comprenden que saber cuándo pedir ayuda y usar recursos útiles es en realidad una clave para convertirse en un adulto productivo. Google uses universal translation models to translate what the speakers are saying. Models then replicate the style and tone and then match the speaker's lip movements. This could be incredibly beneficial, but could obviously be used by bad actors to create deepfakes. So the service was built with guide rails and is only accessible to authorized partners. So Bard is headed in a direction where you can use Google's tools and tools across the web to create anything you can imagine. And I'm pretty fond of these new ways to tackle AI safety concerns. And good news, Bard's waitlist has been removed and is now open to more than 180 different countries and territories in English, Japanese, and Korean. And they're on track to support 40 languages soon. So try it out for yourself. What do you think about Bard? about their attempts at safety. Let me know in the comments below and click that video on the screen to see their presentation on the new AI search. Thanks for visiting AI Focus.